Welcome to Oshkosh. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs> Oshkosh. I mean, if you're into aviation and you haven't been to Oshkosh, you got to go. I had a great time this year. Uh, lots of really neat stuff happened, but I just wanted to spend a quick second talking to you guys about the favorite thing that happened to me at Oshkosh. It's, uh, as you guys know, it's it takes a lot of effort to make these videos. It takes a lot of money to buy all the camera gear. And um, sometimes I question why I'm really doing it. But at Oshkosh, it was just really really neat to meet some of you and have a little chat with you you know I make these videos you post them and you know you wake up the next morning and you go oh a thousand people watch my video that's pretty neat but it's really just a one zero 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 on the screen and it doesn't really mean a lot but I, it was just really neat to sit down and talk to some of you and and meet some of you and and shake some hands and it really kind of changed my perspective on why I make these videos and why I should keep making them. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling on. Um, we'll get back to the video, but really I just wanted to say thanks and, and it was just really special for me to, to meet some of the people that like watching the videos I make. All right, back to the video. Crafters booth at Oshkosh. I'm jealous. Mike just traded a Wilga ride for a P51 ride. Here's some airplanes. <laughs> what do you think about this aero shell performance crack? I think that they are doing very nice concentric circles. <laughs> That's a big word for you, Greg. I just heard it from a 10 year old. <laughs> okay, almost over to the uh, Stoll Corral. Looks like I already see a big crowd of people around Draco. So this should be fun. Really nice evening, nice temperatures. Um, pretty much no win. Okay, I'm here at the ultralight field with Mike Patey, and we're gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna tell you all his secrets and let you know how he lands that, uh, that Wilga. All right, it's actually really different in a turbine. Draco is a really unique bird. I'm very accustomed to coming in on a carbon cob or any other bush plane I've, fl I've flown for years. Bring it in, if I want to get down in a hurry, I can quickly slip it, straighten it out, bring it in, adjust pitch power, everything that everyone's accustomed to. On Draco, it's very different. Draco has beta, has the ability to go in reverse. I don't do it on the way down because I could actually mushroom the air around my prop, envelop my elevator and rudder, and, and stall the back of my aircraft and lose all control. However, I can pull the power back and start to flatten the prop where I have forward thrust, but the pitch is very flat. What that does is it puts a, like a giant air brake on the front of the aircraft without blinking my tail. So I can come in and come a normal approach, and if I got to drop down over a 100 foot tree and get it down low, I don't even slip it, I just bring it back, flatten my pitch of my prop, and bring it into a heavy sink rate. As I approach the ground, I bring the blades back open and I can uh, roll it out and hit my mark. So I'm still playing with it, having a lot of fun. I've only got a few landing in it, so I'm going to learn a little bit more, but uh, it's going great so far. It's a lot of fun. Come out and join us. Awesome.
Thanks a lot, Mike. You bet. Okay, I'm here with uh, Trent Palmer at the Ultralight Field, and Trent's going to walk us through how he manages the madness of the stole landing. Yeah. So for me, at least from short final, obviously I'm trying to get set up as slow as possible. So in my kit, Fox, full flaps, full aft trim, and I like to get a little behind the power curve. I don't like to hang it as much as some of you guys do and like the slatted guys, but um, I'll definitely be a little behind the power curve. And then uh, the rest of the part for me is all uh, power management is just arresting my descent. Most of my speed is all pitch. I mean, we know this, this whole thing, pitch for airspeed throttle for altitude and it, it all adds up to right there and there gets to be a point where I get really blind in my round out kind of phase or into the flare so I think I approach a lot faster than some of the guys here and I really just get it slow right at the end so it's all a timing trick and a lot of times I'll end up drifting past where I want to land if that's the case I just dump flaps and I'll either dump flaps right on touchdown or even before if I'm about to drift past it and at that point with mine just stick in the gut and full brakes okay what about what about brakes tell us what you're doing with brakes I'm, I land with them locked. Okay, so and then I just feather off of them to keep from going on my nose. But uh, out here I'll have a light tail. A lot of times I can just skid to a stop, especially on grass. I don't have to get off the brakes. I, I kind of get off of them just a little bit just to um, keep straight. Okay. So you're doing a brake check on, on short final and then you're just holding brakes, touchdown. I think what ends off. up happening is I come up to the line and I kind of like I already want to be stopped. So I like just roll onto the brakes without even thinking about it. I'm like, go, go, go. And then I dump flaps and just... Okay. It's all, it happens so quick. I mean, right. you know this, right. but yeah. I, awesome. And it's funny, I should probably put a camera on my feet to see if I really do it, but I know when I watch videos of me, I land and my tires aren't spinning. Right. So, and then I'll skid to a stop on dirt a lot of times, so. Yeah. And it always varies, I think, depending on conditions and how heavy you are and what's going on, it always changes. And I'm not used to flying at this altitude. Right. So, right. that'll be different too. Yeah, I had a camera pointing at myself about a month ago and I was surprised at all the things that I do automatically that I don't think about and, uh, and just noticing them. Yeah, camera, and that's one of the things it's I kind think of an automatic thing. It, a lot of them are, and like sometimes I don't get rid of flaps, sometimes I do. At least when I'm doing the backcountry stuff in a competition, I'm always getting rid of it. But. Awesome. Cool. But yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Trent. Yeah, no Good problem, luck dude. tonight. <laughs> See ya. Okay, I'm here with Pop Story, <laughs> and we're gonna figure out what his method is to get his uh, airplane stopped as short as possible for like a stole or a competition landing. Let's hear yeah. it. Give us all your secrets. Well, the secret <laughs> is. Stop, you know, stop short, but uh, I guess what I do is I get out, uh, if you got room, you know, if you got room, I try to get out and set up a nice little stabilized approach as slow as, get it real slow, right on the edge of the stall and real slow and full flaps and everything down, hanging out, and uh, I bump up my brakes, make sure they're on good, and, and, uh, and hold them on, hold that pressure with them, and come down uh, right on the edge of a stall when I get to the line, right where I want to touch down. I uh, chop the throttle right as I get to the line. And I have a little hydraulic flap drop thing on my plane, so when I chop throttle, I can also drop my flaps all with my thumb on the hand. So I drop flaps and, and land with the brakes on and, and then try to hold the tail as low as I can. So feather the brakes and keep the tail low without letting the tail get too high, but on the brakes as hard as I can, come to a stop. That's my plan. And win the competition. And does it, does it work out every time? No, not every time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I used to, uh, I used, before I put that little flap drop thing, about half the time I chop the throttle and forget to drop my flaps, you know, so. This way it's right there in my hand. I almost can't do it, but I can't chop the throttle without dropping the flap. Works All right. pretty good. Well, I would tell you good luck, but you're like me. We're just going to be uh, on the ground watching. Yeah, helping, we're watching. Right? Yeah, we're just watching. We're wannabes <laughs> today. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Pops. You bet.
heading to the forums for our talk this morning. What up, folks? We're gonna go see Mark working hard selling tugs and try to hijack him so he can come to our talk. Paxton pay you to tell you about it. Yeah, so we're donating this tug to the EAA for the Young Eagles. So all of the proceeds that go for the person that buys the tug goes to EAA to help young people fly more. So yeah. about it. Pepsi. Pepsi. 